what is gray rock? Gray rock is a way of reacting, engaging, or, or minimally engaging with the narcissistic person or somebody who is toxic or someone who is manipulating you that gives a very low response, non-engaging reply. So to any manipulative individual you're giving, um, or, or manipulative behavior that's coming from an individual, you're giving them a very boring reply. That is, you're not engaging in the manipulation. You're not engaging in the drama. You're not engaging in any of it. You're just replying completely boring, completely, um, hmm. yeah. Okay, it, in, what, it, what it is meant to do is to um, avoid the interactions that then become reactivity, that then become where you start to get the feelings of cognitive dissonance and confusion because of gaslighting. It's meant to, um, it's meant to keep you safe sometimes. It's not meant to be a lifestyle, you guys. This is meant to keep you safe when you have to have interactions with a toxic person. Hopefully, if you're doing this and if you're at this point in the relationship where you're able to start using a gray rock technique, you're not doing it so that you can stay there and expect it to then become a happy, healthy relationship. It is meant to, it's very useful in low contact situations or if you are uh, parallel parenting situations or if you're a business partner or, or a boss or something like that. And if you are in a in a daily relationship with someone, this isn't something to keep up for long periods of time. And I'll tell you why in a bit. Gray rock is short answers, short replies. It can be more kind of placating, like, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. I hadn't thought of it like that. Huh. All right. It, it, depending, of course, on how in the situation, right? It can be factual or unemotional responses. It's just the facts, ma'am. You know, just stating the facts and that is it. You can use it like, uh, so say that you're in a conversation with them and, and they start giving you a bunch of word salad and, and accusations and all this stuff. And somewhere in there is a, a question that they have. You can listen for the question and be like, okay, that's the only thing I'm responding to and answer and respond to that question. Very short, very brief. Why gray rock? Why, why do we need to use a gray rock technique? So you're gaslighting, that's number one, right? Gaslighting. Gaslighting, if someone is gaslighting you, it's not a conversation. The conversation ended when the gaslighting started and you are now being manipulated. You're being convinced of something, to, to believe something that isn't what you believe, to, to think something happened that didn't happen, to whatever it is, the, whatever way they're using gaslighting. So someone's gaslighting you and you engage in it and you say, that's not what happened. This is what happened. Oh yeah? The gaslighting, they amp it up, they ramp it up, they ramp it up until there is no piece of that conversation that pertains to the original thing you were talking about. At that point, the narcissist has effectively deflected the original thing that you're talking about, taken it into some other direction, tangentially, whatever, gaslighting you all over the place, and you no longer know why you're upset. You no longer have any idea why, why you're having a conversation or you're confused or you think it's your fault or you're accepting blame. So that's a, that's a reason you can see why gray rock would be useful there. Um, insults coming from a toxic person or demeaning, devaluing words. Why would you need, you don't need to build yourself back up to that person. You don't need to prove to them that you're not the bad thing they're saying. They're being cruel. Okay, so we gray rock that. Blaming and projecting and accusations. If an accusation is true, then of course you'd respond to it. Why would you need to respond to an accusation that is a lie? Blaming. There's nothing to respond to. We, we feel the need to defend ourselves because that's normal and natural to not want to be, have someone doing that to you. But it doesn't actually doesn't actually work when you're talking to a toxic person because they got you right where they want you as soon as they start, as soon as they get under your skin, as soon as they get in your head, they're right where you're right where they want you to be. They want to engage in that argument, in that fight, in that, so then they can shut down, they can do the whole cycle all over again. Okay, so that's a, that's a reason. Um, if someone is attempting in a manipulative way to control your appearance, your social interactions, your money, anything like that, 
high levels of control in your life, you could gray rock them for that. You could gray rock uh, someone with possessiveness or jealousy when they are toxic and manipulative. If they say, where were you? Who were you with? Show me your phone. Do this, do that. You know, um, can gray rock it. Here, here's my phone, whatever. With, well, I was with my friend so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm blah, blah, blah. You do this, that. Okay. I hear that you're worried about that. You know, like it's just being boring without being, you don't want to provoke. It's non-provocative, boring communication. All right. Um, when someone is giving you half-truths and lies and you know it, why force them to say the truth? They're not going to take accountability if they're narcissistic. They're really not. So all they'll do is start gaslighting you in another way. All right. Um, blame shifting. If they're blame shifting and, you know, you caught them doing whatever it is and they start blame shifting, that's another reason you might want to use gray rock. There is no point in engaging. So basically what I'm saying is when you start to recognize manipulative techniques and the manipulative tactics used by a narcissistic person, one who is toxic in relationships, let's put it that way. Those are the things you don't engage in anymore. Those are not, those are tactics to make you engage. The tactics to make you take the blame, to force accountability onto you, which is really theirs, to twist your words to make it so they can get away with something. Whatever it is, it's all, it's generally about them not taking accountability or asserting power over you. When you feel those things happening and you can in your own mind name it and understand it, that's a point to say, oh, it's time to gray rock. Even if you're in the middle of an engagement with them where you are being gaslit and you are arguing and you're getting reactive, you can take a breath and you can start gray rocking. It doesn't matter when you do it. It's, just, it's easier if you catch it beforehand because then you're not all worked up, right? Doing this too much causes a couple of things. It can cause you to feel like you're never heard. You're never able to get your point across. You're not validated. You're because you're not you're not trying, right? It can cause you to feel like you don't have a voice. You're not standing up for yourself and all of these these things. It's not what it is. If you use it in small doses and you're doing it and you understand why you're doing it, that isn't what it is. But it's what it could the effect of doing it over and over and over and over for years and years and years can be that. So be careful that you you know what you're doing, why you're doing it and that you you the thing is all those things are true. You're not being heard. You're not being validated. But are you when they're gaslighting you? No. So you're what you're doing is you're taking control of the situation so that you're deliberately not being heard. You're deliberately not defending yourself. You're deliberately not taking a stand. And it gives you a little ounce of your own power in that situation and your own uh, your own position in that discussion, right? Long periods of time of doing it can be hard on people. So if you are in a situation and you can't leave, please have someone to talk to so you can talk through the things you weren't able to express to the narcissist and get some validation or at least someone to talk about it and um, just to vent it, right? Okay. Um, if you are low contact and no low contact or um, they are a very peripheral person in your life, they're not a, someone who's in your primary person in your life, it can be very effective and very useful. It can also make you feel like those things, but you kind of know it's coming, so you're, you're, you can be okay with it. Um, it's meant to stop you from responding in, from emotion or reactivity. If you feel like it's making you reactive, it might be time to switch the technique or go even lower contact. All right. Um, it's a tool for keeping you disengaged enough to not let in the effects of the manipulation. If you see the manipulation, it can't get you. It can get you, it can start to pull on your guilt. It can start to pull on this or pull on that, but it can't get you the same way it can when you engage with it. You engage in the gaslighting, it's got you hooked. And then you're defending something that wasn't even the problem in the first place, right? You know what I mean if you've been gaslit. If you are having trouble when you gray rock and you're struggling when you're gray, when you're using the gray rock method, feel like you're okay, to feel like you're you're not invalidated or you um, you know, if you're struggling with, well, I never get to say my I never get to say my side, I never I'm never heard. Think about two things. <laughs> One is you weren't heard to begin with. That's a narcissistic person or a toxic person you're dealing with. They're not going to hear your side. They only care about their side, right? And number two, well, the way to deal with it, and I think, 
is to name the behavior that you see in them to yourself, not to them. Don't tell them, I'm going to gray rock you now. Never. Okay. Just start using it. Um, don't tell them, I see you gaslighting me. That'll just start a whole nother argument. That's engaging. You instead, actually do the gray rocking and understand, oh, they're gaslighting right now. Okay. Next comes what? Guilt trip, name calling, and then there it is. Oh, there it is. They're doing this thing. Oh, they're going to shift the blame onto me. It's going to be my fault next. Boom. It's your fault next, right? So, but it's all up in here. You, as you're doing it, you're the observer. You're no longer engaged in it. It's no longer happening to you. It's happening at you because that's what they're actually doing. They're actually putting all this out, projecting all this at you. It's nothing you actually did that deserves it, right? Okay, so our quick tips here for using the gray rock technique. It's all going to be different depending on who you are. The type. Okay, for, before I say tips, I want to say this. Narcissists behave differently when they are, when people, someone is gray rocking them. Okay, some of them get worse. If that happens, quit gray rocking. Find another method. Okay, find another method. If it becomes dangerous, get the heck out of there. Okay, if it makes them more aggressive, more assertive, more gaslighting, more if it if it exaggerates, this is meant to diffuse. If it doesn't work, don't use it. Okay, it doesn't work on that person. That aside, for most people, it works pretty good. <laughs> so. Um, it's not going to make them stop doing the behaviors. That's what it's not going to do. It's not like, oh, they get gray rock five times, they quit doing it. You're not trying to train their behavior. What you're trying to do is not engage with their manipulation. Sometimes it limits the amount of gaslighting that happens. Sometimes. Most of the time, they still do it. That's the whole point. If we could make it so it was easy to live with them, we would, right? We wouldn't go through all this. We would just figure out how to live with them and do it. The thing is, there is no way to live with them in a peaceful, happy, loving way because they aren't peaceful, happily, and loving people. Engage, disengage from the manipulation, whatever that manipulation is. Just disengage from it, okay? Do not take it personal. See it for what it is. They're a narcissistic person. They're going to gaslight me. They were just told something they don't want to hear. They're going to gaslight me. I don't need to engage in that. Not necessary. Disengage. Name the behavior to yourself. Keep it quiet, okay? That's projecting. That's gaslighting. Okay, this is what they're doing. I see it. Okay, name it. Number two, offer nothing in return. Sit and listen. Mm -hmm. Well, sit and pretend to listen, <laughs> all right? Listen for what you need to hear. If there's a question, if there's something that's actually needing to be responded to, sure, respond. But Keep it, offer nothing, offer nothing back in the form of argument, nothing back in the form of engagement, right? Keep it brief and let them rant. Go ahead, go, just let them go on and on and on with their endless monologues, their gaslighting words, their word salads, whatever. And then keep your replies brief. It shortens the duration of the conversation, if nothing else, right? Um, don't tell them what you're doing. I've already said that. Don't tell them what you're doing. Use this sparingly so you do not disconnect from life. Okay? Use this sparingly. And um, you can act disinterested. You can act semi-interested. Whatever. You have to gauge it based on the person you know you're dealing with. So here's some tips when dealing in, in text and writing. If you're low contact and you are parallel parenting, say, and you get a long email or message from them, First of all, keep it in writing if you can <laughs> with them, if you can, when you're low contact this way. And you get a long thing about everything you do wrong, about all the things you're planning to do that are wrong and, and how you're, you're bad and you're this and you're that. And then somewhere in there, there's a question about what they need. Somewhere in there, they're stating a need. And then the last paragraph might be about how you're wrong again. Don't respond to any of it except the question. Yes, I'll be there Thursday at 2 o'clock to pick up. Send. Nothing else. Ignore the rest. If they are, it's the same with love bombing in that situation, right? But but you can gray rock love bombing too, especially if you're low contact and they're like, oh, this is so wonderful. Let me tell you 
Um, like I had someone saying that their ex was sending them pictures of the kids with his parents and the, and the meals they ate and the wonderful time they were having on a trip and how the kids were having so much fun and blah, 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 blah. And she was like, why do I need to see all this? If I, I'll talk to my kids when they return and I'm not a friend of his. You know, like, and, and and he's using this. He's trying to hurt me with this, right? I guess he was. He was trying to show, oh, look how what a great dad I am. Look at how much fun they're having. And look at you. You're, you don't do all this fun stuff, blah, blah, blah. And and what he needed to know was what time the, you know, whatever it was. He had an actual question in there. And so he said, just answer the actual question. Don't look at the rest. 